Hey folks, Sevek here. Welcome to the special features of Battle Kid 2. I've been meaning to do this for a while. I'm going to be showcasing the special stages of Battle Kid 2 and talking about some of the things that went on with the design of them. So, let's get into it. Okay, so let's put in the password here. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so a few things right off the bat. Uh, this stage, uh, both the color palettes and name, were um, inspired from Crystallis, or Crystallis, depending on how you say it. A nice RPG for the NES. Uh, I had memories of that area being a very tough area, like the first tough area you get to uh, play it as a kid. And then some things people wouldn't really probably think to do. If you go into your console, no map, and don't die. That's a very good objective. So... Okay, so let's get into it. So the first room, we actually have some unique enemies here. Pickaxe chucks where the pickaxes actually fly up instead of down. So that's just an extra flag that I stuck into the game. Um, I mean, you can place them in the regular game. There's nothing that would prevent you from doing it so, but I never actually did that in the regular game. So next room, one I'll just kind of slide here. Wait for it. Wait for one more. Turn around and get rid of him. Third room. Just sleek in there. And then drop down. Fourth room. So this room, you want to wait for the middle turret. There you go. So this room is basically your shots off. It's kind of tricky to hit this guy. Ah. There we go. Okay, and then just navigate here. So this is uh, something people might not know. If you kind of are very close to the edge, you can jump up and then it'll actually slide your hitbox over just a little bit. We need to inch over a little more. There we go. And then that'll let you drop down just like that. So let's progress into the next here, you just need to wait for the polar bear to not be facing you, and get your shots off. Or the frost kuma, not the polar bear. I think they're called polar bears in the from source code, though. It's actually been quite a while since I've looked at the source code. Alright, so we cleared that room. And then, oops, there we go. Alright, and then here we go. Now, here we've got a little nod to Petunia X with the fake save points. You can see it's upside down there. And then just weep, 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 weep. So, yeah, even if you were to be on top of the hitbox of that uh, save point, it wouldn't actually function as a save point. So, alright, climbing up, climbing up, climbing up. So, again, more about your time here. And I should have gone. There we go. Alright, drop down. So this room, uh, again, is more about patience than anything. So you gotta dwindle their hit points down. Right. One more for the top, and then one more for the bottom, and then we can go. Alright, wait for this. Alright, we did it. What's next? Okay, the room with the four turrets. So this, uh, just... This one just is about carefully getting rid of these guys one by one. So pretty much kill the left wall. And then wait for the white right wall. And there we go. So the next room I think is with the rats. Yes, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, I don't know if I should try this or not, because it's kind of risky. There's a trick you can do where you don't even have to kill the, kill him. But I think I'm going to play it safe, just for the sake of not having to restart. So, of course, I gave him his nice little shield of orbit drones. I think I might actually edit that back into the video, though, that I'll show the trick where you can bypass this almost entirely if you're... Shots 
shots. Eh. Saw that coming. There we go. So just drop down and then carefully make your way. Basically what the trick is going to involve is you enter the room and then you just slide and then do a very short jump and then you can bypass it without even having to kill him. But it's very tricky to do. This room... Oops, didn't mean to do that. Alright. Just slink your way over, then let the conveyor drop you down. Slide. Well, not slide, but glide. And here we go. So this room... Great symmetry. Or not symmetry, but kind of cooperation with these two guys to make it tricky to get you to do this. Okay. One more hit on him. In the third special stage, there's a similar room with this. Although the other thing is that there's a respawner for the eye guy. In this case, there's not. And then this is the final room. Okay. Just wait for it. Wait for it. Ah. Balance is getting thrown. Ah, my balance is getting thrown off here. Oh, I should have just gone for it. There we go. All right, we cleared it. And unlike Battle Kid One, you actually get a password to fight the boss directly. Um, I guess I did put that in Battle Kid One just because I didn't really. It was kind of an oversight on my part. I didn't really think people would have wanted it, but. Oh well, live and learn. So here we go, first boss, the Nasty Golem. So, of course the name is a wordplay. The original boss is the Nice Golem, where nice is a real type of rock, in this case, nasty, and it's spelled with that G at the beginning. So here we go. So funny thing is that this boss actually, the attacks that we're kind of seeing here, are kind of similar to what I originally had for the nice golem, but I'm like, no, that was just way, way, way too hard. So this is just um, an endurance test, really, because he only has two shot patterns and then the rocks. So just gotta play it safe and then dwindle his hit points down. I think he has about 60, maybe 65. Good. He's purple. Yeah. Ah! Oh well. Oh, I thought I was almost going to get a second one there. Yeah. For the shots up in the air like that, you want to start by going to the left and then right and then left again, like that. Yeah, don't try to dodge them from the right at first, because it's going to be very difficult to do. And then just here, that little safe spot. Whoa. Yeah, you got to have that rhythm. If your rhythm gets thrown off, then that, that'll be the end of you. Whoa. Ah, missed. Ah! Okay, I didn't think uh, that was gonna happen. Okay, round three. Hopefully this will be it. Yeah, I'm being pretty silent for this. 
just because you have to have that concentration for the rhythm. And if you're up close like that, you can usually get four, sometimes even five shots. But for the most part, it's just three that I'm getting. Oh, I guess I got four there. Okay. And only two there. one might do it. Yes! Okay. So there we go. He's down. And of course, just the right door opens. I think, yeah, if you were to leave the room, he would just respawn because there's nothing that actually flags him as being dead. So there we go. There's our trophy and actually announces his name and all that good stuff. So there we go. All right, that's special stage one down. I'm going to be making a separate video and then editing these together. Um, but as I'm, since I'm thinking about it, I'm going to just do a quick edit and then show you that trick in the room I was talking about with the Queeks and the three Orbit Drones. So hang on for that, and then I'll be doing Rosie Shrine next. So the trick, you wait, 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 do a straight jump like that, and there you go, you can bypass it. So there you go, all right, I'm gonna do Rosie Shrine next. Okay, so let's put in the password here. In my opinion, this is the hardest of the three special stages. Uh, let's give it a go, okay. So, what can we say? First off, the stage itself is, of course, a color or palette swap of the Haunted Shrine uh, in red, hence the name Rosie. Also, I chose that password mainly because I needed 10 characters and then that fits. Uh, and I also like the idea of having a stage for Hantai Ramos, uh, one of my favorite bosses in the main game, so to give him a super upgraded form and then a stage to go with it. So some other things, uh, this is still the same, just like in the Mount Saber stage, and wireframed is also the same. Uh, anything else to say about the stage? Uh, the theme is also used in the Gauntlet of Evil, or the new Gauntlet of Evil, I should say, uh, where you get the damage amp, and then a similar setting. And other than that, uh, not much, so I guess let's go. First room, kind of tricky but not too bad. There we go. All right, second room. More about endurance than anything else. Just drop down, up, over. Wait here with my baby toe on the edge. And get rid of this guy. Okay. Uh, this one's kind of tough. So just make sure you're platform. He doesn't destroy it. Okay. This room, pretty easy. Yeah, one of the rare utilizations of those guys in, uh, <laughs> in a regular room. So let's go next. So just wait, 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 and go. Yeah, I really did like how much more versatile these uh, orbit drone enemies are compared to the first game, the different radii and different speeds. So anyway, let's wait here, wait here, go. The next room, if I remember right, has this, yep, these. Just drop, drop, drop. And go, go, go. Now the next room, if I remember right, yes. So this brings back an element from Battle Kid 1, which was actually pretty prominent, and that are, that is the enemy spawners. Yeah, I decided to bring these back for the special stages, just to mix things up a bit. And you can spawn uh, quite a few enemies from them. Uh, there's code for, in this case, the... I'm going to pause for a moment. There's code here for the um, spirit conjurers, stalking spirits, and then other enemies like yetis, eye guys, and whatnot. 
Uh, this room, I remember though, there was an interesting bug that had took place where if you killed the spirit conjurer while the stalking spirits were spawning, they would actually not spawn again. So I had to make some special code in that case so that they would always spawn. Uh, it had something to do with the death animation and then timing and so forth, but yeah, I fixed it, so. All right, let's unpause here and go. And then, oh yeah, Sklungy spawners. So this is one of the few rooms where you can actually kill one of these guys. So they have six shots, you wanna hit them five times and then bait one up top there. So wait for him to approach, take him out and go. Okay, now, doesn't disappear? No. But if you use it... <laughs> so I had that idea. Uh, I, I considered using it in Mount Saber. Like, nah, just do something a little... Maybe not quite as funny for Mount Saber, but yeah, this is one of my favorite jokes. The only problem is now that I've done these joke save points, if I make any future games, I'm going to have to come up with more jokes. And, mm, I don't know. I can top these, but we'll see. I guess we'll see. That's going to be a long ways off, though, before we have to think about this again. All right, so the second half of the stage, uh, definitely a bit of tougher little transition room here for the sludge, and I guess let's go in. So you just got to wait. So use these as a little reference what I do with the geometry if you're trying to look for a specific spot to kind of divide it up into lines that you can see. So just wait here, close to the center, the point of death as we should call it. All right, then wait over here. So once you get up here, it's not too bad. Just grab on, you can take these guys out. And it's smooth sailing. All right. Next room here, we have turn up these guys. But just yeah, this one's not too bad, really. All right, then we gotta go up, up, and then you gotta do your jump from here. You can't do it from down below because you need three jumps. There we go. This room is a little bit trickier. So, oops. Yeah, you want to take out the bottom guy. You gotta hurry because if he responds, he'll immediately shoot at you. And then to go back, you wanna get rid of him. Okay, oops, there we go. Okay, good, good. Yeah, that's this is probably one of the harder of the or hardest of the rooms in the area. Just that little uh, getting back, you have to make sure he's not facing you as you descend. So going up, though, there should be enough space to avoid those, and then we're good. Okay. So here, uh, let's try that one more time. Here, okay, just, again, timing. So you do have these safe spots if you're kind of feeling uneasy about it. But yeah, this one's not too bad, and we're out of the sludge. Now the next room, this one, yeah, you gotta get him to destroy all of these. Actually, I'm gonna reset that just one more time, okay. So what you want to do here is get him to destroy the four blocks. So it's not easy to do, as you can see. Yeah, this is probably one room, like even for the special stages, I probably could have made it a little less difficult. Alright, the last block. So what I would do here, just remember, just dwindle his health a little bit. Okay. Here we go, this is... Just make sure to remember you have two jumps so you can get to safety if you miss. There we go. Just get in there. We gotta get rid of him. Just wait a moment. There we go. Okay, we did it. Alright, this room. Okay, this room with the high, high spawners. Actually, that might have been a bad idea. Okay, maybe not. Alright. And then another timing room. You just gotta 
Be patient. There we go. Okay. We're almost home free. Okay. Final room. So this one's just again kind of a patience test. Just be careful though. Here we go. Now, normally you can drop down, but I kind of like to do that just to be safe because the timing is very close. And then one more. Okay. Now we can do it. Okay. Alright, we're home free. I really hope we are. One more hit. There we go. In this case, you can just run. You don't have to kill him the last time. All right. So now, Super Ghost. I I don't know. This is the password I came up with. So. All right. Let's go in and let's fight our guy. So notice, no wall grippers. So it's all about nerves here. Okay. One, two, three, four. Ah. Rather than rushing to the room, I should have talked a little bit about the boss itself. Uh, obviously he's faster, and then it's trickier to dodge, and then the absence of the wall grips uh, makes the fight quite a bit harder to get shots on him because you don't have that stability of being in place to be able to fire off a bunch of rounds. Uh, but yeah, I'll talk about his attacks when we see him. So, alright, let's go in and let's try round two. Alright, there you are. There we go. Ah, that's what I'm talking about with the no stability. You can maybe get about six or seven hits. Okay, this you want to do a light jump. And then the orb will like just hit him. Oops, okay. What have we got? Okay, this. Now this one, he actually moved to the side. To instead of going straight down like before, but yeah, you want to bait him twice, and then the orb will be low enough so you can do what I just did there. Alright, what have we got next? Okay, this. Ah, missed! Oh. Okay, try again. Yeah, normally I like to be on the left side for most of this stuff, too. I don't know why that side just feels better to me. Nope, he's on the right. Yeah. Alright. Can we do it this time? I hope we can. There we go, left side. That's where I want to be. Ah, oh, too early. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, we got yellow. Yeah, not much else to really say. Just endure, endure, endure. Ah. Oh. Alright, third phase. Ah, right side. Wow. Okay. Hopefully not too early. Yes, it was. Wow. Alright. Right side. 
not this. This attack on the right side is not too much of a big deal. Wow, I'm shooting the wrong way. Too bad. Okay. Well, there we go. Rosie Shrine down with your nice rosy trophy. So, next will be Wireframes, my favorite of the three. So, Super Hunter Ramos has been slain. Alright, I'm gonna stop and then make another video and then edit these all together. So, see you for Wireframed. All right, last one. So, wireframe. So, of course, very, very different look from the rest of the game. So, this stage, uh, what can we say about this stage? Uh, I actually had to put in some special code to get Timmy to be wireframed, which exists in this room and the save room. So, before the room actually starts, Instead of using Timmy's default palette, it instead uses this different palette. And that's how um, all of the enemies function. We'll just take a quick look in the next room. So like the ball, its outline, instead of being black, is orange. And the rest of what would normally be colored is now black. So, and that's that way for all the rest of the enemies as well. So in some cases, um, they don't really look like wire wireframe. Just like their outlines are instead a different color kind of produce that illusion but yep all right now I guess let's actually begin the stage all right so first room just gotta add that fast finger there yeah probably could have made this just a little less difficult because it's the first room but no oh well so then pick a, this is what I was kind of talking about with the black and then instead in this case lots of yellow and then pink that's also the only other appearance of the pink pickaxe chucks down there. So remember to use the conveyor belts instead of trying to run off because then you'll go into the spike. So oh, I just have to time this. There we go. So once you get rid of him, it's pretty easy. Well, not easy, but so you can. So if you notice, I'm not actually moving because both of the conveyor belts I'm on the influence. So. Speed is negative one, plus one is zero. There we go. Actually, we can stand here. What am I doing? Okay. Okay, and then the final guy. There we go. Alright, second room is these guys. Okay. Yeah, these guys look pretty good in the wireframe, though. Alright, go up and around. So this is a case where it does look a little awkward with the black uh, instead of just outlines, but... Ah, well, it's not too bad. It, I could have used blue instead of black on the fish, but then it would have still had the same thing even when they leave the room. It would have been kind of weird. But anyway, we'll wait for it here. Safe spot here. And then safe spot down here. There we go. All right, so that wasn't too bad. This room. There we go. All right, sludge room. Just want to drop down. Just get a little lower. And there you go. Ah, this room, the little uh, carousel, as I kind of like to call it. So, and then I had a little fun with the colors. You can see dark green and light green. And so you just gotta remember these safe spots. So go up here, just a little patience. There we go. Okay, dropping down. 
Now this room is, uh, oops, before we go down there, this room is an interesting one in that some people tried solving this in a way, and it, it is possible to do, obviously, but there's a much more, easy, there's a much easier way to do it, so I'm going to show it here, that involves with the blocks. So one more hit on him, okay. So you're safe here from him. So what people do is they destroy both of the blocks, but really just destroy one. Because as you see, the block won't actually get you, and then as you're running from the ice block, you don't have to rush as much. So we're going to shoot him in the feet. Oops. I guess one more hit. We're going to go up here, though. There we go. We're going to kill him one more time. Because as you can see, the block will not actually go down there. There we go. So here you're safe. So no rushing. Alright, next room has the six gunner drones. So yep, that wasn't too bad. And then here we go. So a little nod to something. <laughs> oh dear. to me. Alright. I was gonna at one point say something like continue point not marked just to mock you, but uh, same pretty. Same principle. I think worked out better. <laughs> so anyway, let's continue. This is uh, something I mentioned in the Mount Saber. Oh. Wow, I'm doing stupid stuff here. Okay. There, that's what I wanted to do. See, I gotta... So this is what I was kind of talking about in the Mount Saber with the Eye Guy and the Stalker Drone working together, only this time the Eye Guy gets an enemy spawner. So this room is definitely tough. Actually, I haven't been counting how many times. I think I've hit him twice. Yeah, that's the problem. You gotta remember do this stuff. Ah. Yep. Yep. Alright. Good, good, good. That was one of the toughest rooms. This room's not too bad. Just gotta... Well. Here. Do that again. Okay. There we go. Up another one of the ideas with the respawning spirit conjurers and stalking spirits. Alright, uh, this room, you have to just remember your safe spots. So, right here. There you go. This one's a little tricky with the uh, uh, razor drones, but not too bad. Wait here, and then you gotta wait for the fast one to clear, and then we should be okay. There we go. Alright. This is one of my favorites, and I think some people have said they like this room too. So, pretty much just get these guys to all drop down. And then just remember, it's two hits after they collapse. So they're all hit once, and then what you wanna do is jump descend, and then shoot as you descend, so something like this. There we go. Alright, next room, just a rush room. There we go. Uh, this one, oops, reset this. You don't want him to destroy any of these. There you go. And then we're almost there. So, and uh, I kind of talked about this with the blocks so you can count and then be able to see where the safe spots are. There we go. And then the final one, you just gotta go for it. All right. And then we're free. Now these enemy spawners are have a unique attribute in that uh, I have a setting where the enemies will only spawn once. And in this case, that's what they are. But 
this is, I think, the only case where I... No, this is the only case where I actually use that behavior. So, let's see. Pink is evil. Yes, it is. Alright. And even the boss door is pink, although... In retrospect, I should have wireframed the boss door. But, oh well. Let's go. So, pink face. Something you see in the manual. A being who... Is only where the most worthy dare venture. So, some things about this fight. The floor is, of course, a conveyor. And there's actually some code in there where he was also going to be able to turn it into ice, but instead he just rotates the conveyors uh, every, I think, five turns or so. Spades is probably the trickiest of the attacks. Diamonds is the patient attack. So anyway, um, yeah, a unique boss. I definitely wanted something that, like that in the special stages. Um, I did consider actually making three unique bosses at one point, but like, no, that's maybe just a little too much. But I did want at least one. And like the other bosses, he does change colors, but also the expression on his face changes as well. So he goes from kind of smirky to like neutral like this to very angry hearts. You gotta always be moving, but do not ever go into the center of the room because you will be overlapping him, and that's not good. Because the way it works is he's the opposite of where you are from the center, so if you're on the top right, he will be in the bottom left. Concentrating on the fights. Love to be able to one shot this guy. Spades. Oh, oh, oh. Spades always throws me off sometimes. I did that. So, alright, that's it for the special stages. The trophy is wireframe, so hey, look at that. I guess one of the other reasons why I didn't wireframe the boss doors is maybe because of the palettes, because this little object is in a special place in graphic memory. So, it would have probably required some extra changes on that part, but whatever. Alright, so I'm gonna collect the trophy here, and I'm gonna show you one more special feature. This is actually something that's not actually given to you as a password anywhere in the game, even on Unfair. But I'll show it off real quick here. So what you got here is if you put in this password, face viewer. So this is a little something I stuck into the game, mainly to test out the cutscene portraits as well as the cutscene engines. So these are, of course, from the intro, and then it just cycles through all the various portraits in the game. And then, here we go. And then, also, you may notice that you have the graphics here, and then they're flipped. So the way the cutscenes engine is coded is that all the portraits can be easily flipped. Like, because the way the game's, um, what can I say, the game's mapper allows for graphic RAM, so what I can do is take the graphics and then flip them ar around easily enough. So all these graphics I could flip if I wanted to, but I just showed these off, like Timmy of course, and then Happy Timmy, Surprise Timmy, and Doctor. Because originally I actually had two different sets of graphics for left and right, and I didn't want to do that because that would have taken up a lot of space and then it would have been annoying to move all that stuff around but 
So it worked out pretty well. So, hey, I'm surprised. I love that shot. I really do love that shot. And then the communicator without the picture. And then white coders, headquarters at night. And the shards, yeah, you can even see here, just this hair is slipped. And then and there's another shot with the two ships. And then that's the ending portrait. And then I think that's the last one. So, all right. So, final remarks. Uh, it was a lot of fun doing this game and a lot of fun doing this video. So, I want to say thank you again very much for all of you who have supported the project. And I will say this, that I am working on another project. It's not Battle Kid 3, though. It's actually a different game, but I'm going to have more on that, hopefully in the new future. So, until then, thanks again, and hope... Hope to see you in the next NES adventure.